You know when you get that tea, there's that tea that you want, and you don't think it would be a good idea, but you want it anyways, and you want like, the big version of it, and then you get it, and you really like it at first, but then it kind of goes a little stale. Hey guys, this is my review for Hardcore Henry, a film that kind of came out of nowhere and a lot of people were excited for, or not as much as definitely showing from the box office, but it was definitely a film that people were interested in because first person point of view films are a rage, and they're my guilty pleasure, I will admit that. And the fact that they were doing a full on first person shooter, and it looked exactly like a video game pretty much, that was amazing, and it looked sweet, and the trailers were great, especially with the Queen song. So this one has a hold up. Well, it's really fun at first. The visuals that are pretty decent and admittedly it is very bombastic, but you actually are pretty certain of what's going on. They do some really cool parkour and the action is intense. The funny thing is the story is good and bad at the same time. The one thing that's really good about it is it perfectly emulates a video game. There are certain moments where are, they're straight out of video games, like where the bad guy will keep you but then he'll he'll set you free to keep on going because that's his plan, his ultimate plan. Or the fact that there's one point where Shardo Copley's like, you better throw a grenade down there, lad! And it's just like, you know, I was expecting him to hit, say, hit at X to reload. The one of the issues about this film, though, is that the film is very ambiguous, and it's not because it's trying to be, it's more so that it has to be. Because of the character's perspective, we have to constantly keep this sort of unknown factor to it. And while it is enjoyable, there are moments where you're like, okay, what the hell is actually going on? The visuals do get a little bit over the top at some points, and there are moments where you actually do have no idea what's going on. Not only are you kind of... Uh, you're kind of confused story-wise, but you're also confused visually-wise. But at least to say the action is amazing throughout this entire film. The visceral violence is amazing. And that's the film's biggest problem. I'm amazed I'm admitting this, but I got desensitized about 45 minutes through. After this, there was this really awesome chase with like on top of the cars and they're jumping up on top and they're shooting at each other trying to get onto this truck. That is the point where the film starts to go down for me. And it's not because it's not awesome still, it's just I've literally seen the, I've hit the peak of visual violence. Like the end has this amazing fight scene with all these guys and this amazing choreography and all this extreme amount of blood and violence and I'm just sitting there going, no, oh, I'm okay. And the reason why is because it's such a visual overload. There's a reason why these first person point of view things are so great on the internet. It's because they last 10 minutes, 10, 20 minutes, and that's the visual stimulation. That's as far as we can go now. That's, it's terrible to say that, but that's as far as our brains can really take it. Unless we are pushed beyond a point, we get desensitized and it starts to lose its flavor. And that's what unfortunately happens in this film is I stopped caring after a while. And admittedly, Shardo Copley is probably the best part of this movie. He's better than the visual violence, and the visual violence is amazing. He is the best part, but the problem is if I tell you anything more than the fact that he is helping the main character, I spoil an amazing part about the story. And he is the best part of the story entirely. Because the villain of this film, he's cool, he's the guy who's running the, the he's got these psychic powers that doesn't make any sense, but he's Admittedly, he is exactly like a video game villain because he's like talking all mysterious. And he's like, well, Henry, maybe we will continue this later. And this point where you're like, why don't you kill him? But then he lets him go and you're like, okay. In the end, it sort of makes sense because of the grand scheme of things. But he is exactly like a video game villain. I was expecting health bars. I was expecting a reticle. And this film is a video game incarnate. We're never going to probably get an actual video game. like. If it wanted to be the best video game movie ever, all we'd have had to seen is actual prompts for reloads or attacks and whatnot. And then this would have been the best video game film ever about a non-video game. I give the director credit for doing something that's completely very ballsy, must have been hard to choreograph this crap. I give Shoto Copley credit for doing an amazing performance. And I give the team credit for trying to do something very difficult and something very new to a thing that's very old. But in the end, I'm going to give Hardcore Henry a 4 out of 7. I did enjoy it, but the problem is you're going to get desensitized and afterwards you're not going to want to watch it again. That's like it mostly is with other films of this genre, is once you've seen them once, you never really want to see them again because we get a single 
a single protean perspective for a story. And when you've seen that one perspective the entire way through, you know all the angles. There are some moments that maybe I would want to watch again certain action scenes, but as I said, I got desensitized, and that's the weirdest thing I could say about this film. I don't know if that's a weird sort of comment on my character. I hope I'm not some weird person. But either way, I did enjoy this film. You will enjoy it. It's a film I admit you have to see to experience it, but I feel you will have the same thoughts as I do when the film ends. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed this review. I'll see you next time.